Hello, my name is Kasim Kaira, and welcome to the transport section of the Uganda Museum, where presidential vehicles since independence are preserved. These cars tell a story through time, spreading over nearly half a century. Each car tells its own story, with the different leaders that occupied them. But years of neglect are now threatening this national treasure with extinction. Maybe time to salvage what's remaining of it. There are efforts at conservation by the National Museum, but first the story, and I join Christopher Sewiyungu from the National Museum. This car is called Rolls Royce, and it was used by the first president of Uganda. So it was the first sought out presidential car that was used by the first president of Uganda after attaining independence. Um, Edward Mutesa uh, the second, and after um, his overthrow, it was used by the president actually who came in and that was Milton Obote. Apollo Milton Obote. Yeah. This is one vehicle that you see very much appearing in a lot of the shots, the independence shots of Uganda. And you can see that after 50 years, for it to still be looking like this, it's still intact. Uh, how was it preserved? Where was it before it was brought here? Um, as I've told you, it is a presidential car. It was in a state house. But because the museum is, its mandate is for conservation, so we requested to have these cars preserved in the Uganda National Museum so that the public also get to know their history as far as um, um, cars is concerned, as far as um, presidents are concerned, and so they are here now. Mm -hmm. um, this vehicle um, is a Mercedes-Benz which was used by um, Id Amin Dada, and we know that Id Amin became president in 1972 up to 79, so this is the car he used mainly as a president. So this car and the other one, these were presidential cars, not individual cars, but presidents of Uganda. So uh, the times that we would see President Idi Amin, for example, driving in a Jeep, this would be a ceremonial car that would have been left behind. It's not a field car, it's mainly for ceremonies where they just use it for public, for public viewing. Yeah, pl yes, please. And uh, these cars actually, uh, of course, they could have their own cars, which they could use in their own businesses. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to uh, the president kind of event, all occasion, these are the cars that would be used. How did they manage to survive? I mean, with the looting in 1979, for example, you could see a lot of looting happening. How did these vehicles manage to survive? I mean, looting even happened in State House, for that matter. Um, these are one of the very instrumental kind of uh, um, aspects to do with uh, uh, the presidentship of Uganda. So we agree and believe that the people who were concerned in keeping them and preserving them did their job, actually, and they were in good custody. Mm -hmm and until they came here at the museum. Uh, this, this vehicle was used by um, Dr. Milton Oboti um, in his second reign. When he became uh, president in the second reign, he used it as his vehicle as president. And so in that time, it, he was using it for transportation. And so it is also important to keep in the museum and preserve it for the purpose of history mm -hmm. uh, of Uganda. One thing I remember about uh, President Milton Obote is the manner in which they would swap vehicles. They had like three Benzes, different Benzes that they would use, and you wouldn't know which one actually w w the president was in. Considering the times that uh, Milton Obote was president, mm -hmm. would you consider this to be a posh presidential vehicle? It looks, it looks so normal, it looks so ordinary, for, like it was owned by some people at the time, in comparison to, say, for example, that Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, I mean, by that time, um, because actually we have different tests and preferences, mm -hmm. Even today you can find some people having, you know, moderate kind of cars, moderate kind of stuff. And you can see other people having, you know, big, big kind of things. It's presidents we are talking about. Though, so. Yes, and, and this was his prime car. I mean, uh, this is what he thought was important for him, mm -hmm. was um, nice for him. And so we also treasure it as one of the key um, cars we have in the, in the Uganda Museum. Right. And looking inside, you know, like sometimes you just need to peep a little bit. Yeah. You see the president, you know, sat uh -huh. most likely there. Uh, his driver sat here. Yeah, and of course, if you look closely inside there, yes. um, presidential cars always have different kind of services in, in the car. And mm. you can see some kind of, uh, you know, in the glass. The, the air conditioning, the radio, air the, radio, the, the, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, and, and the space for his legs, actually. Mm -hmm. It's yes. kind of wide enough to let yeah. him stretch his legs in. Yeah. And this is, now we come to another Benz, which they actually almost look the same. They look similar. This is 80s, 90s. Oh, but this one is a little bit stretched, I think. Yeah, this is, this is um, actually it is called uh, Stretch Limo um, Benz, which was used by the current president. Um, His Excellency Ulrich Kakuta Museveni, who became president in uh, 1986. Mm -hmm. 
So he used it, and actually um, it is one of the cars which was used by the Pope when he came in Uganda in 93, and he used it um, moving around uh, central Uganda. But we, we are also yet to see another car which was used by him again when he was going to, when he was visiting uh, Kasese. This okay. is also a presidential car. Right. Yeah. And a peep through, actually, because sometimes, as just like we did with the, with the previous one, yeah. it helps to get a feeling. This one is much wider. It's, 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 much, it's much spacious. It's like the president would even have visitors in there, and they could sit and chat. So it, in a sort of a presidential form, in case the president gets a visitor, this was more practical. Yeah. They, they could sit with his host, uh, and, and the guest could sit comfortably. As, as far as I know, sometimes uh, when you're a big person in the office, sometimes you can have meetings even when you're moving. So maybe probably could have some few guests sit in and, and they discuss as they move. Mm. And also maybe um, the person next to him who actually takes guard of him uh, probably could use uh, this car also. Right. Mm. Well, it's, it's, quite, it's quite interesting. It looks really, really beautiful. Yeah. looks pristine. Well, of course, it's been here slightly less time in comparison to the others that we have seen, but it is still, yeah, it, is, it's it's it still looks... <laughs> this is Mercedes-Benz actual cross country. It was also used by His Excellency um, um, President Museven. And this is the car I was talking about that it was used by uh, the Pope mm. who actually came in uh, 1993 um, when he was visiting Kasese. So it was one of the cars which was used by that time actually. You'll find that this is a vehicle that the President would use ordinarily sort of going up country and not in the city like the Mercedes-Benz you just spoken about? Yeah, of course, um, when, you took, uh, when you look at the, the geographical aspect, uh, sometimes you need kind of raised cars like this, uh, which cannot um, be a problem when you're going for, for those long kind of um, country. Yeah. Yes, and I've just been doing the natural thing, which is looking inside again <laughs> <laughs> to just see. It's allowed. Uh, this, is, this is beautiful, but uh, it doesn't look as spacious as the other ones. So probably it's sort of a practical car where you just have to use it going to the field. Yeah, of, 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 uh, this one actually, okay, it's not spacious like the other one. As you, um, w you know, we get different kind of models and, mm. and um, uh, people prefer different kind of choices. Mm. Uh, much as it's not spacious, but, you know, it is the prime car that was used. And by that time, it was really, really, really an expensive car. Just like today, even some people actually are yearning to have such a car in position, the position. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one is also um, belongs to the current president. Um, he also used it, use it, used it in um, his uh, kind of lifetime. And so we also brought it here to mark that kind of sequence of different cars being used by the different presidents. And so this space actually, it is a presidential uh, kind of, uh, it is having presidential cars, which is actually um, uh, a transport gallery for the Uganda National Museum. Mm. And very soon it will be open to the general public to view um, uh, these cars. Right. Yeah. Looking at these cars so far from where we have come from and where we are at now, yeah. one thing that I find quite telling is also these vehicles, beyond the fact that they, they carry different presidents in different times, the vehicles themselves are sort of a history in, in, in themselves. You look at the Rolls Royce and how it was important around that time. You come to the Land Cruiser, which is, you know, and how important it is in these times, you see a difference in terms of times. Uh, so we are, we are not only looking at presidents, we are also looking at times. Yeah, chronologically, actually, it is important to know which is actually, um, was the technology, uh, which was the different kind of mechanical aspect in that time. Um, with the time we are moving in, different new technologies come in with different kind of innovations. So that one is also a representation of technological advancement as far as automobiles is concerned. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a challenge of conservation. Not all people understand what conservation is. And uh, these are some of the, uh, the challenges, actually, vandalism. Um, includes, you know, damage, sometimes um, intended, sometimes not intended. And so these are some of the, the examples you can see of uh, um, vandalism. So the reason as to why now um, the museum is deciding to have them um, preserved in a specific kind of uh, location, um, protected like the way you're seeing being constructed around, it is to avoid such kind of continuation damages. So uh, wh why would someone do this? I mean, because is, is it the people fleeing? Is it uh, 
children playing. I'm, I'm just trying to understand where this kind of vandalism is coming from. There is a saying, especially in the central people, uh, the Baganda, they say the eyes of a Muganda are in the, in the hands. In their hand. So <laughs> they normally want to test, they normally want to see, mm. is it a blood uh, proof car? Wow. And so by trying, not necessarily, sometimes they try with um, fingers, but sometimes like kids would mm. come and with a stone, you know, hit a little bit and see. So if you look at around this, all these are kind of um, stones by mm. different mm. Uh, okay. people. Yeah. It's in the same kind of category. With yeah, the it's one. the same kind of category with uh, uh, the other land cruiser we've seen. Mm. It was used in the, time, uh, in the same time period uh, by the same person still. And so we also thought if we can have both of them, it is really um, a good kind of venture. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Christopher, for your rounding. And, but probably you talked about conservation, and I think this is where now it is important probably to make your own you know, public appeal. Because yep. if it's about conservation, why is it important for people probably to be able to have you know, these vehicles in the place that we have them? Um, this is very interesting because um, having these vehicles, not necessarily um, showcasing the vehicles only, but the story, the history, it tells a Ugandan the history it tells uh, a non-Ugandan who would like to see which kind of cars were used by the presidents and by looking at these cars you get to know about the historical aspect perspective of politics in Uganda so it is very key and important for any Ugandan and visitor of, of Uganda National Museum to have a look to have a glance at it mm. and be told the story about the politics of Uganda. Many of these vehicles have been here for more than 30 years which means the need for conservation is very urgent, and the urgency means it's now. Rose Mwanja is the commissioner for museums. Well, the journey has been long. Uh, these vehicles were being housed at uh, State House in Entebbe until one historian, uh, a heritage person, had access to that place. And he said, look, Rose, those cars will be able to tell a very important story about this country and where we are coming from. Why don't you ask for them? So we, we went by, we talked to the comptroller of State House. I said, look, okay, put in, the car, the, 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 put in your request. request. <laughs> and we did, I drafted letters for my peers in the Ministry of Tourism, and they went to State House. And that is how eventually State House released the vehicles to the National Museum. Mm -hmm so well, that we can preserve them for posterity. Initially they were in the open and over the years they were not being used so they are bound to deteriorate. So our role is to find all possible efforts to ensure that these cars are preserved for posterity but are also enjoyed by the public who want to understand the history of this country through our presidents. When you talk about the need to conserve mm. and protect these vehicles to make sure they are there for posterity, mm. have you worked out a sum of how much it might take to be able to get them to where you think they would be able to, you know, be able to be preserved and conserved for that matter? Yes, we, we are doing this in stages. First of all, we have managed to put up a, 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 a shed, a gallery where they can be out the, when they ca where they can be controlled out of the weather, out of the sunshine, out of the rain. And so now they have found a home, a permanent home for them. So the next stage now, we are in the process of contacting the experts in these repairs to be able to give us the figures that we need for each car. Estimates put the tentative cost at $150,000 for restoration. It may be more. Donors will almost certainly be needed to chip in. I travel to a Kampala suburb where I meet a vintage car expert. He's already been able to restore more than 10 vehicles, many of which have competed in the Vintage Car Expo in Uganda. I seek his take on the presidential cars. <laughs> I believe first the storage facility should be changed. They were in the sun, in the rain. They should build a shed and pack them into the shed. Then maybe it's possible to restore them. But generally, I think the most difficult car there would be the Rolls Royce. 
because Rolls Royce, you don't just pick parts from any shop. We will have to import them from Rolls Royce itself. It could, to my estimate, it could cost about $50,000. Okay, and for the Mercedes, I think those pairs are generally available, and the Mercedes are not that old. They are cars of the 60s and 70s. So $20,000 for each car would do. Now, this was a vehicle that was used by President Museveni for a number of years before it was decided to bring it here at the transport, at the National Museum, the Uganda Museum, in the transport section. A lot of times you wonder what the president is actually up to when he's sitting inside the vehicle. But then I've got just a feel, the sort of things, the sort of buttons that he would be pressing to communicate either with his driver or to make communications outside. It only tells, I think, of the importance of why such things are supposed and should be conserved for posterity of a nation. Additionally, I want to give information to the general public, especially Ugandans, that there's a lot. There's a lot we can get from here, and uh, uh, I want to encourage the Ugandans to come with their children, because the children ask a lot of questions, and you are tasked to be able to answer, the parent. And in so doing that interaction, you get to know a lot more about your heritage, which you think, you think it's, I know it all, but you are able to find something new each time you come to the National Museum. So I want to encourage people, come forward, visit the museum, let's do it together. Kasim Kaira, Azam News, Kampala.